Jin, Kyungishan, Dojian. All right, guys, we are back with Team Arena Challenge number two. This is game three between Rocks Kiss and Dream Team Gaming. And here we have from Rocks Kiss our Teal Zerg player. It's not Happy Zerg, it's not Zerg Bong, it's Live Zerg. And on the left side of the map, we have our Red Protoss player, the winner of last game from the team Dream Team Gaming. It is Nalza. Yes, indeed. And, and these have been very weird. ZVPs, the first two that we've seen. Exciting, fun brands, but certainly yeah. not conventional, uh, the last, slightest. Yeah, I mean, last game got a little bit passive towards the end, but it, yes. was, it was an interesting start. Um, it's going to be really cool to see kind of what the difference in style is between these two Zergs that are on the same team. Um, I don't know if I've ever actually seen live Zerg play before, so <laughs> I'm curious to see what exactly he's going to pull out here. But, you know, I, if I had to guess, he's probably going to do something a little bit more standard than Adverse tends to do, you know, we'll probably see a speedling expand on something like that. It is forced cross spawns, like you said, so he could easily go for a, uh, a pool first into hatch without getting gas. If he feels very brave, he could go for a hatch first, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> well, this has uh, been kind of an interesting setup to begin, as Nalza has actually... That's a very weird placement for a pylon. Um, if you, you... You have players approach this map a couple of different ways. The players that actually decide to forge fast expand right across the front will usually put their first pylon here mm -hmm. so their buildings can reach all the way across. This one, obviously, they can't, which tells me that he's clearly intending to do a two-pylon uh, wall-off up at the front. So... Yeah, you, but that's you, just a weird place to put your first pylon. So, Or you'll, of course, do the one where you put the pylon right here, and then you build the structures directly in towards your nexus. Yeah, you do see that that uh, pylon right there uh, pretty often. I, I would say it's more, much more common in Korea than in the rest of the world, really. But that ramp is pretty wide. It's it's tough to wall off correctly. But he is going nexus first, though. Yes, he is. Interesting. And, yep, pool first. Uh, actually, no, that was, uh, was gas first for... Live Zerg, it looks like, so it will be yeah. a speedling well, expand. Although, you know, he could I, always decide to go for what? I think they actually was both gas came afterwards. up at just the same time. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it was it was gas slightly after because he's going to have to wait a while for Well, either speed, way, so. but yeah, he's yeah, going to yeah. guess <laughs> speed and then expand. You know, I, I don't think it's going to be any sort right. of crazy all in or anything like that. It Definitely. could be, but. I hope it's not. It's I like hope it's a not longer either. game. Yeah. yeah, I like those nice. I like games with lots of aggression, but. Uh, and, and sometimes you can have ridiculous cheese turn into a long game. I watched yeah. the, the the longest, most ridiculous, probably worst game I've ever seen in my life. I uh. casted, um, and this is nothing against the two players. It was two Terran players. One of them was still life. The other was, I forget who it was. It was on Scrap Station, though. And they both Scrap went Blue Flame Station. Hellion drops oh. and killed each other down to two workers apiece. Nice. And spent the next 20 minutes remacroing. It was it, terrible. Why not? <laughs> All right, so there's the uh, there's the hatchery. Looks like he will go ahead and expand. Mm -hmm. First of all, there's the speed. And this is, uh, yeah, two pylons actually flanking the front here. This is just uh, interesting way to do the wall here up at the front. We'll see a cybernetic score in just a second. But, um, yeah, Mr. Livesurg on the other end has pulled himself off of gas. He's got a nice economic basis to, to continue moving on in this game. Another queen being thrown in as well. Yep. So things proceeding pretty normally here. And uh, so the question is, I mean, I guess the next big thing we can kind of consider now is where are the players going to go from here? I mean, right. uh, Nalza, all right, we'll talk about Live Zerg because we're showing him right now. You know, he's got a, a couple different options. Some Zergs like to try to take a third hatchery really fast. Some sure. like to get a fast lair and go for infestors quickly. There's even been a kind of a rash of Zergs yeah. lately that uh, have been going for Spire Tech pretty quickly. Yes. Off of two bases. Or you could just play slow defensively, get upgrades and roaches. So a lot of different options there. And the same token for uh, Nalza as well. You know, he could do like a plus one timing. He could do Stargate like it's like exactly what he is doing, <laughs> actually. Yes, yes, he is. Yep. So it looks like he has chosen Stargate. Okay. So for his opening. Yeah, and that's not a bad response necessarily because, you know, a lot of players will go after quick thirds on, on uh, you know, different sorts of maps, and it looks like that is exactly what Livesurg is going to go with here. But, um, you know, an Evolution Chamber, and he should remain pretty well defended against uh, quite a few air units that are coming out. Zerg players do have a lot of anti-air options as well, just have to commit a lot of resources to it, and it keeps them pretty... Uh, oh! Uh, Fortunately, Mr. Zealot in the middle of the map is going to get picked off, but uh, Nalzo actually still will get the read on the next hatchery. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, most Zergs right now have been, for a long time, they've been making Evo Chambers just blindly like that, but a Roach Warren going up 
instead yeah. for live Zerg right now. All right, yeah. that's interesting. Let's take so, a look at his vision. He's seen the front wall, but no indication of the Stargate quite yet. Yep. So we'll have to see if he does to pick up on that at all, because obviously the Roach Ward is not going to help him terribly well against the Void Ray. And you can no. see it's already, already rallied right up to that third. That's what a lot of Protoss players will do. You know, they'll make that Void Ray, send it to the third base right away. And if they're lucky, you know, cause a cancel or just kill the hatchery if the Zerg is unprepared. Yeah. We'll have to see. This could be that that uh, plus one Zealot timing, too, as well. Second Aww. Void Ray. Wow. Okay. Yeah, two Void Rays coming out. One has already actually rallied across the map. Looks like it's going to get picked up, though, by the Zerglings. It does. Oh, and it even was on attack move, so it does oh, go after the Zerglings as no. well. gets turned around. No Evo Chamber at all. We're going to need to see some more Queens and stat. There's the Evo Chamber, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. But that is in response to seeing the first. What are you pinging? <laughs> nothing. Thank Thanks you. a lot, magic <laughs> pinging person. I appreciate it. Because you have to go look at it. I mean, because because you got to think to yourself, well, what did Jesus. I miss? What did I miss? And it's nothing. All right. So, so yeah. first Void Ray is out right now, going right for that hatchery. Yeah. Good decision there. Queens and are slowly uh, yeah. trundling their way across. They are. It'll be a little while. The positioning of that Void Ray could be a little bit better. Obviously, the Queens will be able to hit it. Oh, never mind. It accidentally followed the uh, drone a little bit. So that's. Slightly better now. It's just randomly attacking the support crawler. Yes. Hopefully it'll be able right. to kill it. It is. Let's charge it up. Uh, but, micro uh, there by that. Keeping its charge. But, oh, uh, click it. You know you have there to. There we go. Okay, fine. I'm going to go look. It's just uh, an overlord. It's an overlord. All right. Thanks for the, <laughs> yeah. thanks for the tip, magic pinging. <laughs> Three sport crawlers coming up now. And let's go ahead and take a look. I'm, I'm just, no, right. I, I no, refuse. Just I refuse. Don't. I'm just done. Don't. They're trolling. They are totally trolling. Right. No, ah. stop it. For the love of God. Anyway, okay. A <laughs> couple of Zerglings sitting outside. Make a rule now. that no pinging allowed when you're observing these games if they're actually being played. So yes. he's going to go after the main now. A lot of queens have walked over to the third, but there is creep basically connecting. And there's a little bit of a space, but I don't know Not if uh, Nalza is going to really be able to do a whole ton of damage with this. No. Really? I don't know. It's going to be very difficult. How many queens are actually out on the field now? Five. They are going to have to start retreating. There they are. Now make their way up here in a second. He could get the Roach Warren, though. It's yeah. getting very low. He could. That would help a little bit. Wouldn't need to deal with obviously well, roaches, but yes. Oh no, is he going to lose the void ray? That Let's void ray is getting pretty low. Uh, oh, he oh. circled back. Wow. Oh, Nalza says, "I got your roach warn. Here you go. This is only fair." I sent him a void ray. You know, Nalza's void ray control has not really been the best I've ever seen in this game. To, to put it mildly, here, yeah. I mean, he's going to need to do a lot more if he's going to make this big Stargate investment worth it. Um, I used to go on rants all the time at the GSL how I thought that a Stargate play when used like this was very coin flippy in PvZ. Yes. You know, it was it was really uh, unlikely that you would do damage to Zergs for quite a while with this type of play. It looks like he's gearing up for a, quite a large gateway uh, timing, probably going for the 1-1 he's made. Enough sentries, won't need to make any more of those. Oh, no, go ahead. He's just expanding, I guess. Yeah, so once again, we're going to have a yeah. relatively passive game and, you know, moving over to Rogue, which Twilight Council now, he will start moving away from those uh, Phoenixes. But these are still going to be nice harassment measures. It's going to give him map control. I'm surprised that he actually hasn't now that he knows he's not going to do a lot of damage in, like, a big frontal assault with air units. I'm a little bit surprised that he's not gone around the map, just sitting over on top of the Queens that time. I actually didn't attack or lift or anything, just sat on the Queens. I need to just stop predicting things. I was spoiled with the GSL, everybody did the same build. So it's like, <laughs> oh, no, I know exactly what he's going to do, but no. I thought he was going to kill the uh, the overlords that were sitting around the map. But he probably will eventually. He, well, he will now, I mean, because it's it's directly inside of his main, but hopefully. Just like it's two two seconds down. Oh, well. We'll get it eventually. He's I passing. promise you. At, All right. For that overlord as well. Interesting decision making. I are puzzled. So, okay, let's take Sokka where the game's at now. We have our first uh, Overseer coming out now. Uh, I'm sorry, Observer. A few more gateways are being added in with Blink being researched. So similar to what we saw last game out of him. It's going to be pretty similar unit composition. Uh, over for Livezerk, however, a mess of upgrades are coming up, uh, not least of which is uh, Pathogen Gland. So Infestors are going to pop out very, very quickly now. <coughs> All right, and let's see. Roaches are going to uh, walk their way back on to creep here next to that gold hatchery, so Livezerg's able to hold on that for any stretch of time. He is actually going to be in a magnificent yeah. position economically. He should be in pretty good shape because he does have that macro hatchery. He's got the ability to produce a lot of units at once. He does have a significant supply lead, and he just killed the Observer. So I think that gold base is going to be uh, okay for a little while anyway. Yeah. And I love that sweet bug whenever you, um, you're you taking the vision of someone else and then their unit dies and the vision goes away. You see how those units are really dark right now? Oh, really? Yep. 
Oh. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I never even knew that happened before. Yeah, yeah. See, this queen's a lot lighter. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, small trivial facts, but uh, here we go. So, Phoenix is circling their way around the left-hand side, but let's see here. <laughs> right. <laughs> suck computer or suck internet, Take tells your us pick. Nalza. Either one is one you don't want. To. Oh, I That's like true. this. Banelings and drops being researched by Livezerk. Nice. Looks like Nalza, though, basically just doing the exact same thing he did last game. Yes. Getting the upgrades, getting just... Colossus and a lot of stalkers, a decent gateway force. This is very like basic, basic PVZ right now. Just trying to get a big beefy army and then being like, all right, I have this. I'm going to try to win the game now. And, and uh, definitely so harkens we'll to back to like goes. six or seven months ago. PVZ yeah, kind it, of a thing. So. It really does look like that, only without yeah. the early game timing pushes to try to do damage to your opponent. Right, exactly. I mean, he had moved up the air units initially, but just. Yeah. Didn't Control do a lot with it, but air. Yep. But uh, Hive Tech is coming up now along with the Spire. They'll be able to time nicely along with uh, some Broodlords if he wants to move into that. How many Colossi do we actually have up? None. Our first Zero. with Thermal Lance coming up right now. Yep. That's right. So, I mean, our, our Zerg player is pretty far ahead right now in terms of bases, in terms of army, in terms of upgrades to a certain extent as yes. well. Yes. Uh, not quite as much in the upgrade department, but, you know, he's got enough army to make up for it as long as he controls it well. But, I mean, the, the thing is, is that even with this happening, if a Zerg lets a Protoss sit for too long and they get that big, beefy death ball, it becomes yes. very difficult to win. So, you know, I mean, uh, Nalza's still in it, definitely. And if Nalza is able to stop this Doom Drop, uh, or at least kill a significant portion of the units, get a favorable engagement there, it will be just fine. Right. We'll need to take this at next base, though, very, very soon. Looks like Nalza wants to take the gold. Will Live Zerg let him? That's the question here. Zergling preventing a uh, many thousands of ton structure from dropping on top of it. So. Yeah, well, I mean, well, save the Zergling, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Yep, Speed gonna the devil. Try to drop some Banelings on the army as he moves in. Yes, Fungle indeed. the Stalkers and Baneling them. Normally, Banelings don't do too great against Stalkers, but if you can get a whole lot of Stalkers clumped up in one place, the damage becomes more efficient. So that's sure. why you see a lot of those Protoss players trying that. And this uh, stalker's going to enjoy his changeling kills there for a second. Just became a mentor as a result of nice. that. We'll mentor. teach future generations of stalkers how to kill changelings. That's right. Tutors freshmen in the library after the classes are done. <laughs> that is what mentors do. That's what they do. <laughs> and so, good number of phoenixes here. Is it going to be enough, though, to uh, mitigate the drops that will be coming out of Livezerg? A bunch more mm -hmm. banelings on the ground. The game has gone into total passive mode as he is actually saving up now several thousand resources. I'm really surprised. This looks like a PBZ from like six months ago. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, I think I think Nalza is in a great spot right now. Livezer has really kind of let him get ahead again. Oh, and he's morphing in those Broodlords like yeah. right now, which is meaning that this base is going to go down. And, you know, you could meantime. really use the Corruptors to handle those Colossi, too. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, Livezer is still in it. He can still fungal. He can still do a lot of damage with those Banelings and those Broodlords, but he's, he's really given our Protoss player, every opportunity he could have ever hoped for. And these four Zealots just going to town on the hatchery, and uh, they're getting pretty close to being able to take that out. Doesn't look like it's quite going to be there. Here come the Broodlords now, though. Yep. First line of defense, and it looks like, yeah, two Broodlings dropped down. Oh, there it is, Guardian Shield comes, and now we're going to have right. our big engagement. Going for it. Oh, the Fungal on all the Phoenixes stacked up. That's a nice little break for Livezerk. And the Banelings getting dropped. Or not really getting dropped because the Stalkers blink out of position just in time, but I think our Zerg player just doesn't really have... Oh, well, more Zerglings coming in right now. So, yeah, he does have enough to push his Protoss army back. Yeah, but it was still kind of a weird engagement, though, because those Banelings were yeah. uh, really, really mitigated. The Colossi were able to do a lot more damage. And, yes, Live Zerg is quite far ahead right now, and he's going to be able to remax very quickly off of the available resources that he had. As you yeah. can see, it's already happening. Yes, I will not take that away at all. What a weird fight. But, yeah, it was. And the uh, Protoss player came out of that a little bit better than, I think, under normal circumstances he should yeah. have. Well, it wasn't the most, you know, ideal makeup here and there, but when it come down, came down to it, Nalza had everything so clumped up, just yeah. everything in, like, the tightest ball possible. When that happens, you make it easy for them. I mean, what else can you say, really? And Stalker's warping in directly on top of the advancing Zerglings. They have to watch out. Yeah, that was brave probes. Oh, probes! It's like, oh, well it's time done. to go up to the gold base. <laughs> <laughs> they want to rethink your life. I, I don't think so. I, I think I, I commend them on their efforts. Unfortunately, right. they're all dead. They're mining those gold minerals. <laughs> Picking them up and making sure that no one can ever use them yep. as, they, as they pass. Yeah. Right. More Broodlords being morphed in by Livezerg right now. And this game is going to be pretty much over. 
Yeah. There's not a lot that our Protoss player can do to stay in this. Um, you know, that he had, like I, I said it before, you know, he had the upgrades, he had the army, he was ahead on supply even. But when it came down to it, he had the tightest packed death ball I have ever seen. And yeah. that does not work too well against Broodlord and Fester. Nope, not at all, especially when we have Banelings raining down right on top of you as well. Yes. Um, so let's see here. Is this base saturated yet? No, not really, but there are still 68 drones out for Livezer. We're going to be able to transfer those over pretty quickly. Economic rate is pretty darn good right now, but he is uh, needs to start transferring a few drones out. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. All right, but he is maxed and I, banking resources again. You know, I'm so surprised that Livezerg is just being so passive with this army right now. I mean, yeah, I know he wanted more banelings and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, sure. But he's really, really taking his time with this. So here we go again. Enough stalkers there to uh, possibly end. Well, looks like it's just too much stuff. Yep. Yeah, that is that is just a lot of stuff. Corruptors in the back doing plenty enough damage against the uh, Void Race that are up at the front as well. Oh, and all those units clumped up. That's almost like a perfect fungal range right there as every single unit was hit. The third is now under attack. Yep. Banelings have rolled through almost all of the drones. And that is going to be about it. Yeah, I expect the GG here pretty soon as now there's a uh, hundred supply deficit yeah, for our Queens and their overlords apparently too. That's nice. Yeah, Queens, get it. That's, well, that's actually a really good idea. You know, transfuse the infestors, transfuse the broodlords yes. if you need to. And speaking of broodlords, look at that. Lives are losing his broodlords. Suddenly doesn't have a lot of DPS and those infestors have used all their energy on infested Terrans. So, wow, just kind of a bit poor decision making by our third yeah. player here. I you mean, know, he's so far ahead, it doesn't really matter, course. but it's. Ugh, could have been a cleaner game. Yeah, it, it's not going to change the uh, the outcome of this game, is now all the investors just die in mass. But, uh, uh, Six Stalkers chasing down. Yeah, go Six Stalkers, you win the game. Unfortunately, that's not really going to be the case. 170 yeah, supply against don't. 47. 33 workers on the field right now that are just being used on a half of a mineral patch. And uh, there is a DT somewhere. I'm not sure where that's at. It keeps going up to this base, which he knows nothing is there. Yeah, it's a, a bit odd. Yeah, I do say so myself. Uh, uh, I, I will give. I will give uh, Nalza that he has good map control. <laughs> but well, Nalza, <laughs> he's, he's trying to switch over to Templar as well. But what's a worker count right now? I can't imagine he has a whole lot of probes. Yeah, only 33 to the 63 of Live Zerg. But, you know, Livezerg took some pretty big hits as well. I think he's moving in for the death push right now. Definitely. He's played very, very passive, but I think he knows that he's got enough to take out his opponent at this point. Psy Storm coming up now, and uh, our first couple of, of Templar are on the field. We're still only 65 supply to 183. <laughs> yep. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think that this, this next engagement here is going to be the last one. Just... Picture the victory music going now. I don't know, whatever victory music you really want. There you go. Rewards. about it. Really nothing to stop them at the moment. Templar waiting until Storm is done. They can kill 100 supply worth of units here with one Storm. Maybe that'll breathe some life into our Protoss player. Yeah. The moment he is delaying the inevitable. You know, I'm a pretty optimistic caster. I'm like, you know, I try to find ways that the players can yeah. get out of the situation. Yeah, oh, for sure. Not this time, nope. And there's a, there's there's a fine basically. line you have to strike between um, because you never want to be that guy who's like you know oh he forgot to put down one gas on 18 so yeah. that's it nice game over on the investors there. yes but you don't but you don't want to be the other guy as well who's like it's 20 supply to 195 he has a chance yeah, that's right yeah well this is the end of the game right here guys yeah Zerg moving in GG. And, yes. uh, yeah, so Livezerg taking down a very, very passive Protoss player named Nalza.